Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today I want to tell you about 20 incredible but lesser known movies included with your Prime Video Membership. So this is gonna be a ranked list of 20 movies that are lesser known, which means this list should include quite a few movies you've never seen. Now, we're gonna start all the way at the back of the list with number 20, and I gotta warn you, this is one that is not really for everybody because it can be a little bit upsetting. Not all of the movies on this list are that way, but it's called Compliance, and this is based on a true story of a prank phone call that resulted in multiple crimes, including sexual assault, which is what makes this movie a little more difficult to watch. But it's very well done, and it mostly takes place within a fast food restaurant where a man calls and pretends to be a detective and is able to trick this very gullible restaurant manager into abusing some of the staff. It's really horrific, and again, this is a true story. Now, it's dramatized, of course, and the drama added to it for the movie does work. This movie does feature some really great performances from Pat Healy, who is just a great character actor who's been in movies for years. And Anne Dowd, who had a career before this movie, but her performance here really sort of launched her into some bigger movies later in her career. So it's an interesting watch for that purpose, but I do have some more entertaining movies as we move forward with this list. Breaking Bad fans are gonna love my next pick. It takes place on the border, but instead of smuggling blue meth, they're smuggling armor-piercing rounds across the border. The Hollow Point stars Patrick Wilson, Ian McShane, John Leguizamo in a really killer role, and there's even a brief appearance from Jim Belushi that actually works pretty well. The only problem I really have with this movie is it ultimately doesn't deliver on all the promises that the movie sets up, and by promises I mean there's quite a bit of carnage early on in this movie. It's bloody, it seems like it's gonna go in this really epic direction, but it manages to stay fairly small in terms of the scope of the story. So a little odd in terms of its ultimate outcome and pace and everything, but as I said, there are some things that happen in this movie that are pretty wild. I was really shocked by some of the things that this movie did early on, which is why I think it was a little let down by the conclusion, but I think with the right expectations, this is a really entertaining watch, especially if you like the location, the themes, if you love Breaking Bad, I think this is gonna be a perfect pick for you off of this list. Now, my next pick kind of feels like an elongated sketch, but the performances in this movie managed to make it work because they're just total powerhouse performances from Jodie Foster, Kate Winslet, Christoph Waltz, and John C. Riley. The movie is called Carnage, and it is not what it sounds like. This is actually about two sets of parents that have a meeting at one of their nice sort of swanky New York apartments. Their young kids had a fight, and they sort of have sort of the classic meeting of the parents, but things do not go well. They begin to argue and bicker, and it just builds and builds. And that's about it, but because you've got all these actors sort of going at it with each other, it's really entertaining and fun to watch. I don't think this is the type of movie that would work without some heavy hitting actors like the ones I mentioned, but because they're in it, this is a fun watch. If you're a fan of any of these people, this is gonna be really interesting for you. But ultimately, as a whole, the movie doesn't really work for, I think, mass audiences. Now, as you probably guessed, I watch a ton of movies, and a lot of times I'll watch ones I know nothing about. I'll watch them on a whim, and most of the time, they suck. They're just not good, and they end up not being movies that I'll talk about. But every now and then, one really takes me by surprise, and Spell is a somewhat recent release that did just that. Now, the star of this, Barack Hardley, also wrote it, which I think is interesting, and in this movie, he goes on like this backpacking journey and sort of gets sucked into this world of Nordic mythology. Now this is a very slow paced story, but he manages to keep it very interesting as you go along. You do feel like you're constantly waiting for something to happen, and you are, but when the story eventually sort of reveals what's going on and where it's headed, it's very interesting stuff. I think this is gonna appeal more to sort of the indie crowd, but there's some interesting sort of supernatural things sort of bubbling underneath the surface for most of the movie. And I don't wanna go on about it in fear of spoiling it, but I was really impressed with where this one went ultimately. But you do have to be more patient 
with this one than you do with a lot of the other picks on this list. Now my next pick features Evil Dead star Bruce Campbell shuffling around a nursing home dressed as Elvis battling an ancient evil mummy. I believe it's a mummy. This movie's called Bubba Hotep, and it is a cult classic. There's definitely a group of you watching this video that have seen and loved this movie. Obviously, I'm in that group, but I own a copy. My DVDs are behind the camera. I'm, I'm not gonna waste time trying to find it, but this is a fun movie. If you're a fan of Bruce Campbell in any fashion, even if you've only seen a couple of things that he's been in, but you like the types of movies that he's typically in, this is a great one. It's funny, it's fun, it's not not going to scare you. It's not that type of movie. It's just sort of a fun, campy horror movie that is exactly what it sounds like. Now my next pick is an interesting one because it was originally slated for a major theatrical release. I mean, they were running long ads on TV, which costs a lot of money, and then the ads sort of disappeared. And then Corona hit and theaters shut down and this movie just sort of disappeared. Despite the fact that they were promoting it as an upcoming epic crime thriller starring Joel Kinnaman, Anna de Armas, Rosamund Pike, and Clive Owen. So again, heavy hitters in this one, but I can kind of see why it disappeared. However, I still do recommend The Informer. Now in this movie, Joel Kinnaman plays an informer for the FBI, he's undercover, and as is typical with movies like this, things get out of hand. Now, in this movie, things get very out of hand. And there's quite a lot of interesting things that develop in this movie. Most of the actors that I mentioned do a great job. It looks good, it's well produced, but there's some weird things that don't quite make sense and are a little sloppy in terms of, uh, you know, being realistic. And the tone is off. I felt like it was just poorly directed. Like, it just doesn't quite work because there are some things that occur that are just like, not realistic at all in an otherwise very grounded, very sort of real feeling crime drama. That said though, I did enjoy this movie. I can just see why it got shelved and they didn't want to spend any more money on marketing for it to get butts and seats in the theaters, but it sort of disappeared and ended up included with Prime and makes a pretty decent crime thriller. A great little bloodbath of a movie that features a group of art students that throw a fake costume party for the sole purpose of murdering one of the guests is called Murder Party, and it's surprisingly good. Now, this is done on an extremely low budget. It's in one location, an old dirty warehouse that they probably didn't even really decorate for the movie, and it does turn into a bloodbath. This is a gruesome movie, but only for about the last 10% or so. The other 90% is actually pretty funny. You end up with these art students who are bickering over how they're gonna murder somebody, if they're gonna murder somebody. Meanwhile, the dope that showed up to the fake costume party is just sort of sitting there listening to all of this. And then a chase ensues and it gets pretty fun. But this is a pretty simple movie, again, because it's in one location, there's not a lot going on other than what I'm describing to you, yet it works and it's really fun and entertaining. Anyone who loves sort of lower budget, indie horror movies that are fun to watch, this is a great pick. If you find lower budget stuff off-putting for some reason, this one has the low budget stuff in spades, yet everyone does a really good job with the comedy acting and not really breaking the tension too much, which is tricky to do and Murder Party basically nails it. Now, kind of a lame action movie that stars Christian Slater and Morgan Freeman is still fun enough that it's just really entertaining and I like watching it. I've watched this one five or six times over the years. It's called Hard Rain. Now, this takes place during a flood and some bad guys are trying to rob an armored truck. That's sort of the setup and you just get a good 90s classic action movie. The cool thing about this one though is they built parts of a small town in a giant set and it fills with water over the course of the movie. So you get some elements of things like the Poseidon Adventure where water levels keep rising and it's by the book, it's a little basic, but it's fun to watch. Like I said, Morgan Freeman's got a really cool character, Minnie Driver has a role in it, and Randy Quaid. It's always cool to see him do something that's not Cousin Eddie, because he is a good actor, at least he was, before he lost his mind, but Hard Rain is fun as long as you go into it knowing what to expect. 
Directors Moorhead and Benson recently joined me to talk about their newest movie, Synchronic. And in that interview, we talked about how they actually financed their first movie with their checking account, their personal checking account, which I find incredibly interesting. But that first movie is called Resolution and it's currently included with your Prime Video membership. So they have four movies under their belts right now and they're just spread out. They're on all different streaming services, but Resolution, is one to watch if you've enjoyed any of their other movies, including Synchronic, The Endless, or Spring. Resolution is the smallest one, and like I said, it was paid for out of their personal checking account. I believe they said it cost about $20,000 to make, which may sound like a lot of money, but I can tell you it is not for making a movie, and this movie works surprisingly well. Similar to Murder Party, it's done in a way where it's sort of done in one set, but it's about a guy who chains up a friend of his in order to detox him. Then as they're spending the weekend in this cab and trying to sort of come off drugs, weird things start happening. And it takes a while for this one to get in, but once it gets going, they manage to make some really creepy stuff occur with almost no special effects. I mean, some old school stuff going on here, that's tricky to do and to get it to work for modern audiences. And that's why these guys have gone on to do more movies for more money and are now hired by Disney to do the Moon Knight series. So cool stuff for movie nerds. If you've never seen this one, I highly recommend it. However, if you haven't, I would recommend maybe watching one of their other movies first. And then we will round out my bottom 10 on this list with a just really creepy thriller starring David Tennant as an absolute maniac in Bad Samaritan. Now in this movie, a young valet driver takes one of his customer's cars back to that customer's house to rob it while he's having dinner. So if you didn't have that in your head as a possibility before, you do now, but when he gets to this house, he uncovers something way worse than robbery. It's really creepy, and it ends up being just a really good thriller. Now, there's nothing too interesting happening here. This is a smaller, low-budget movie. Not as low as some of the other ones I've talked about, but it's just really well-crafted. You know, there's not this new revelation that sort of will blow your mind, but if you like movies like this that are just tense, sort of dark thrillers, Bad Samaritan is just a fantastic surprise. So if you're watching this video and you're not in the United States, all of these movies are not gonna be available to you. If you're watching this video in the future and you are in the United States, some of these movies will be gone from Prime Video by the time you see this video. However, you can still access everything using the right kind of VPN service. Today's sponsor, CyberGhost VPN, is that type of VPN service. Now, like all VPNs, they keep your web browsing safe, secure, and private. It is a smart idea to invest in a VPN service, especially one that only costs a couple of bucks a month. But CyberGhost has specialized servers that you can switch at the click of a button and then immediately unlock vast new libraries of content with your existing Prime Video, Netflix, Hulu, Disney subscriptions. Yes, it works on a lot of different streaming services in a lot of different countries, and all it does is it tells Netflix that you're in the UK, that you're in Australia, and you immediately have access to everything that's available in those countries, and it's entirely different than what's available in your country. So go to the link in the description, and right now my viewers, when you use that link, can pay as low as $2.19 a month. That's almost down to $2 a month, less than half the cost of a movie rental to unlock vast new libraries, and it's super easy to use, and they have a 45-day money-back guarantee, so there's virtually no risk, and they have 24-7 customer support to get you set up on devices, and you can use it on up to seven devices at the same time, and it's all the different types of devices you use. It is a difficult deal to beat, so go to the link in the description, see if it's a right fit for you, but let's go ahead and move on with the top 10 picks on this list. Eagle Eye is easily the biggest budget movie on this list, and it came out back when Shia LaBeouf was first sort of emerging as a big blockbuster star with the Transformers movies, and time has kind of forgotten about it, but it still holds up as a fun action sci-fi movie. This movie also features a fairly young Anthony Mackie before he was a big star. Now, in this movie, there is sort of an AI system that is able to sort of track you wherever you go, and it gets pretty intense. It does result in some really wild action sequences with a lot of moving parts, 
and it's fun to watch, it's enjoyable, and it does have a little bit of thinking power in it. It's not total mindless nonsense, but it's also not like, you know, Christopher Nolan type of stuff either. Like I said, it holds up. In fact, you know, right now, there haven't been a lot of big blockbuster movies coming out. You know why. But this could make a good replacement for one. I mean, even if you saw it back then, odds are you didn't remember it that well because it's not that great. But it did deserve to maybe be remembered more so than it has, which is why it makes this list. A great little Australian flick about the end of the world is called These Final Hours, in which an asteroid is due to make impact with the Earth any moment. I mean, it's hours away, but unlike most movies about a giant asteroid headed for Earth, there are no astronauts or miners on the asteroid trying to bury a nuke on it. Now in this one, it's gonna hit, everyone knows they're gonna die, and it's more about how they're gonna spend the last few hours. And the movie itself focuses on a young man and a very young girl that he finds trying to sort of make the best use of the last little bit of time that they have. It's not nearly as inappropriate as it sounds, so this is sort of high drama. There's not a lot of action going on in it. There's not small asteroids raining down or anything. It just becomes this sort of like pressure cooker of time. And people are trying to figure out how to spend it. They're trying to sort of say the final things they need to say to people. And it works surprisingly well. It's really entertaining, like surprisingly so. And the little girl, she does a fantastic job. She's a really great actor. And she went on to be in movies like The Nice Guys with Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling, probably because of her performance in this movie. So movies like this are the reason I make lists like this. They're great little hidden gems, really good movies that just aren't really known by mass audiences yet. There is an early Johnny Depp thriller that's directed by the same director as War Games and Short Circuit. That movie is called Nick of Time. Now this is a surprisingly effective thriller, even if it does feel dated. It feels very 90s, yet it works and it still holds up, but it does have that 90s flavor. And for some reason, this was like a Walmart $5 bin bargain for the past 20 years or so, but it's one of the best ones that sort of fell into that bargain bin category. It's really exciting, it's fun, there's a lot of time, obviously. This one also takes place in one location, but it's a big building. I mean, this isn't a low budget movie. They're moving around a lot. It's not quite a diehard thing. His daughter is taken hostage and he's been asked to do some naughty things by some criminals. So he's trying to figure his way out of it while also sort of proceeding forward with the plan that's been put in front of him. Really good stuff, excellently executed, just a little lesser known and certainly forgotten by a lot of folks. Now one of the most underrated action heist movies, in my opinion, stars Kevin Costner and Kurt Russell as Elvis impersonators again on this list, but instead of fighting old mummies, they knock off casinos with automatic weapons. This movie is called 3,000 Miles to Graceland, and it's surprisingly fun. This one also has kind of a dated feel to it, but it's got quite a bit of action at the front of the movie. And then this, I hesitate to call it a caper ensues where they're trying to figure out what happened to the money from the heist that takes place at the beginning of the movie. Kevin Costner is a badass dude in this one, and Kurt Russell's a lot of fun as well. Courtney Cox has a good role in this movie, and it's just a great action movie that does not forget to be fun. I mean, it does have a hard R rating. There's a lot of blood shooting out of bullet wounds in this one, but just a fun sort of classic action movie that's got a nice hard edge to it and doesn't forget to be entertaining. The strangest movie on this list is called The Nines. Now, not only is it strange because it's got a weird plot and delivery, it's also strange that it's a good movie because it definitely looks like a bad one. Now this mainly stars Ryan Reynolds who actually plays a couple of different characters in the movie and there's quite a bit of other actors you're gonna recognize. One of them is Melissa McCarthy. She pops up quite a bit and this was before she was really famous. And I can't say much about this movie without spoiling it, but Ryan Reynolds plays a guy who starts to notice weird things. It almost feels like it's gonna be sort of like a ghost story or something like that. And then it just takes a hard, and I mean a hard left, and just goes into this really weird direction. And I remember watching it just wondering what the hell is going on, but also why is this working? And it ultimately concluded in a way that I thought was fantastic. I, I, I was really impressed and surprised at how well this movie actually worked, even though it's shot in a way that looks like it wasn't done for much money. But the writer of Tim Burton's Big Fish actually wrote and directed this movie, so that's kind of why it works. Big Fish is also a weird movie that manages to work the way it was written, and he wrote another sort of killer script here and just 
produced it for way less money than Tim Burton's Big Fish. But still, just a gem of a movie. Ryan Reynolds fans should definitely check this movie out because it is one of his more lesser known movies. And I'm honestly surprised it is so lesser known because it does manage to work. I think a lot of you are really going to like this movie. The only documentary on this list is every bit as exciting as some of the best movies about racing ever made. It's called Senna, and it's about one of the greatest Formula One racers of all time. Now, this gets into some of the politics of racing, but trust me when I say, you do not even have to be interested in racing to enjoy this movie, and you certainly don't have to know anything about it to enjoy this movie. This one is just a personal drama of this driver's life and how a lot of people were against him and trying to sort of manipulate the system, again, getting into the politics of racing. You don't have to know or be interested in it to be able to see parallels to politics of everyday life, including politics in general. It's very interesting stuff and also has some really exciting, thrilling shots of him racing, point of view stuff that just keeps everything moving and exciting. Beautiful movie, really well done. I mean, honestly, one of the most exciting documentaries I've ever seen. Vintage 80s has been back for a while with things like Stranger Things and the regrettable resurgence of tie-dye shirts. All right, who, who wrote it? But one of the best retro movies released somewhat recently is Turbo Kid. This movie looks like an after-school special, except it is packed with blood and guts and a lot of fun. So this is a post-apocalyptic movie about a guy who finds essentially what we'll call a power glove and there's a bunch of bad guys. You've got kind of a Mad Max thing going on with this retro 80s thing with a great retro 80s soundtrack. And again, blood, guts, some really interesting costumes and characters. A basic story, but a fun one that feels somewhat familiar and it's just really well executed. Like as silly as everything looks and feels, the tone of this movie manages to continue all the way through, which is a very tricky thing to do. Turbo Kid nails it. And this movie has only been gaining an audience every year since it came out. It's about five or six years old. And there is a sequel currently in pre-production. In fact, it probably would have been finished by now if not for the coronavirus, but you can expect to see a sequel sometime in the next couple of years, and it should be good. It's the same creators. It's gonna be highly anticipated. It's gonna have more money behind it. So if you still have not seen Turbo Kid, now is a perfect time with it being included with Prime. So there are several movies called The Signal, but this one is the first movie I ever watched on Netflix streaming. Basically, I guess it's the first movie I ever streamed. I still remember it to this day. I love it, but it's very unusual, so listen up. This movie opens up with sort of a signal coming through TV with static and everything, and it's causing people to lose their minds. Now, you're gonna be reminded of movies like The Happening, but this one works better than The Happening one because I don't think The Happening is a very good movie at all, but The Signal causes people to go crazy in this very sort of controlled manner. They're just a little insane and decide to start doing horrible things to each other and so on screen, it plays out in a very interesting way, but also because this is a low budget movie that was done by a small group of people, don't get me wrong, it looks good, but they were able to do some things that I think studios maybe wouldn't have allowed, including the pacing. There's a weird pace and a flow to this one. It's not crazy, it's not all over the place, but it's unusual and it works. I remembered it because of that and it's very, unsettling but not in a way that I would say is like a big warning like there's not a lot of you that like should not watch this movie because it's so upsetting it's uniquely accessible despite the fact that it's got some horrific moments in it it's just not so off-putting like some other movies can be it's very interesting very well done and just a great little sleeper movie that I honestly have not seen available on a streaming service in quite a while now so I was excited to be able to put it on this list so with that, we're gonna move on to another sci-fi flick, and I gotta be honest, it's one of the coolest sci-fi action movies to have come out in the last like 20 years or so. It's called Attack the Block, it's from England, and it actually launched the career of John Boyega, who went on to be in the new Star Wars movies, but this one, it has things in common with movies like Shaun of the Dead. It's not quite as funny, and nor does it intend to be, but there is quite a bit of humor wrapped up in this movie as aliens descend on this apartment building in England, and a group of young kids decide to fight back. Now, these kids will remind you a lot of the kids from E.T. They're riding bikes all over the place. That's definitely done on purpose. Another thing that was done on purpose that makes this movie work so well is the aliens not only look unlike anything you've ever seen in an alien movie, they're also done with practical effects 
minutes and it's very effective. Like it works really well. They're very cool looking and very fun to watch. They've got some wild features about them that again are done with like puppetry and not in a silly cheesy way. Like man, they nailed the concept on these aliens because they're different and kind of dynamic too, and they look and feel real instead of just being CGI. So there's a surprising amount of action in this little movie, and it's just a lot of fun to watch. It's easily one of the most entertaining movies on this list, one of the most entertaining movies on Prime Video right now. If you clicked on this list and you've never seen Attack the Block, make it one of the first ones you watch. So I'm super excited to talk about my number one pick. Similar to The Signal, this is one I saw on streaming years ago, and it's been forever since I've seen it available, so I was excited to see it included with Prime. It's called Headhunters. Now this one is foreign language, but it's well worth watching. It's one of the best thrillers I've seen in years. And there's almost no point in discussing the synopsis because this movie is way more interesting than the plot or synopsis. But it's about a headhunter that steals art, yet he crosses the wrong people and things get really wild with this one. That's why I'm gonna push this one so hard. And it's got all the stuff a lot of the other movies have. It's well acted, it looks good, it's, it's, it's well produced. It's again, one of the bigger budget movies on this list, but because it is a foreign language, it's lesser known in the United States, but it is really cool, really slick. And another one that I watched on a whim and was just incredibly surprised by it because it gets wild, like it goes in this direction that I was not expecting, I never would have guessed. I mean, it's grounded from the beginning, yet it manages to stay pretty grounded despite some really intense sequences that again, did not see coming. Cool stuff, kind of got like a classic 90s thriller vibe, but it looks more updated because it wasn't filmed that long ago. Just cool stuff. I, I'm surprised there's not an American remake because it is the type of movie that they normally would remake. But just an absolute killer thriller. If you've never seen it, I cannot recommend it enough. If you don't watch movies with subtitles, I, I'm still gonna push this one because this one may change your mind. I mean, it only exists in this form. You can't watch it any other way. And if you refuse to watch something with subtitles because you don't like to read, then you don't get to watch Headhunters, and it's a really great movie that's a lot of fun to watch and really engaging. So with that, if you have any additional recommendations of some movies you've watched on Prime Video recently, let me and everyone else know in the comments below. Let's also thank the Patreon supporters. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there is a link in the description below. There's also a link down there where you can become a channel member and get access to exclusive videos. There's already a bunch of videos you can watch the first day you sign up with new ones coming out every single week. So if you can't get enough of me, that is a great way to go as well. But I will keep making videos like this as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for watching this episode and you will see me on the next one.